Let's face it, stress is unavoidable, but when left untreated and it infiltrates most of our lives, it can ruin your sleep, immune health, your ability to think and concentrate, even your mental health, basically every aspect of your life. But a new suite of tools is now available that induces a state of natural calm through vagal nerve stimulation. Be sure to listen till the end for the discount on this special advanced healing tech. But first, this is the story of Nuvana with Amy Brennan. Amy, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks so much, Casper. I'm excited for the conversation. And you, like so many others that have created something really interesting in the healing world, have a background in healthcare and in the hospital system and seeing a lot of sick patients. Can you go into that and kind of what led you into even stepping into this forte of creating something healing tech, and then we'll go into the actual technology. Okay, sure. Um, so my background, I'm a registered nurse by background. Uh, actually loved my time in the hospital, especially at the bedside. I was an ICU nurse. I did trauma. I did burns. Uh, I was up at a level one trauma center in Orlando. And so a lot of really high risk behavior equals catastrophic injury and and those kinds of things. But the nice thing about that is that people heal. Mm -hmm. So you unless there is the chronic disease element, which eventually in my career, that's what I wound up managing was um, I came down to South Florida and was the director of critical care and then took over the cardiac service line, which is a lot of preventable, we can argue preventable disease and chronic disease then leading to catastrophic illness. I also spent a very short time in the hospice, uh, which gave me a completely different perspective on health, end of life, and the quality of life that we spend. So that as a background, I, during that time, I was able to meet a surgeon who's also an inventor and wildly brilliant. And um, he and his brother were forming a company. I joined with them and we developed a product that actually accesses the vagus nerve outside the body. And that, that's one of those stories, right place, right time. Having a little yes. bit of a background leads you to something <laughs> new. Universe knocks, right? You open the door. All right. So, so tell us about, because a lot of people know now, I think it's, I'm not even going to say it's trendy, but it's popular. Vagus nerve, mm. you hear it a lot. It is something that I have a Google search for, and it's more and more all the time that shows up. And this idea, what is the vagus nerve, this information highway of sorts. And then you talk about things like neurobiomodulation and how do you impact the vagus nerve. So tell us how you started to you know, look at how you would impact vagus nerve stimulation through something like Nuvana. So, it, you know, it's funny that that you bring that up, that vagus nerve, most people have heard of it now, today, whereas when we first started this, um, no one knew what the vagus nerve was. I mean, it was very rare. And even in my, in my experience as a nurse, I didn't learn about all the health benefits of the vagus nerve. We knew about vasovagal syncope, which is something completely different. Um, so what happened was one of the uh, one of our founders, Daniel Cartledge, is an interventional pain doctor, and he was using a product that was accessing the ear with electroacupuncture and for chronic pain. And when he was discussing it with his brother, Richard Cartledge, um, who's the inventor, he he said, "You know what? I saw a paper years ago that." access to the vagus nerve through surgical intervention. So they wrapped a coil around the vagus nerve in the neck, implanted a pacemaker of sorts to, to activate it. And that was FDA approved for epilepsy. Those trials were for epilepsy. But the interesting thing is in that paper, he had read that people didn't want to have those units explanted or taken out of the body because they felt so good. Yes, it helped with their epilepsy, but they had this lingering, um, I'll carefully call it euphoria, but this overwhelming well-being feeling. So he had looked at that and said, gosh, that's a really interesting side effect. If anyone could harness that, that would be gold. Well, 
the vagus nerve actually does that. And now there's a branch, this branch in the ear that Daniel was using um, in his practice. That's where the connection happened. So it wasn't really about treating an illness. The three of us are all very involved deeply in healthcare um, on the treatment side. But what if we could actually affect things on the prevention side and help people live a better quality of life, get this get the sleep you need, help your nervous system rebalance to where it can function appropriately. And that's really what it does. Yeah. And, uh, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. We all hear yes. that. Unfortunately, most of modern medicine does not abide by that. We wait for disease, not even to become, you know, an acute state, truly a chronic state. And that's the unfortunate side. But you do have more and more companies such as yours that are going into how do we stop disease from in the first place happening? Mm -hmm. And so much of that is due to stress. I think it's the most kind of common thing that people overlook, both emotional stress, oxidative stress, all types of stress, you could say. Mm -hmm. But it's pervasive in our lives, basically, that lead to so many of the illnesses we have. Now, for those listening, Okay, how can putting something in my ear, you know, start to help me de-stress my crazy life? What's the quickest and simplest answer to that? So the beauty is the vagus nerve actually has a branch that goes through the ear canal and fans out into the outer part of the ear. So there's the vagus nerve comes down your brain stem and comes down both sides of your neck and actually connects to every major organ system in the body. But there's a little branch, and I call it like the doorbell mm -hmm. um, of the vagus nerve, and it just comes through the ear. So we can access it that way. So you're, you're accessing it that way. And for those that don't know, this Zen is the actual product company's yes. new Vana, right? And mm -hmm. it's basically a, a, a small unit that's like a puck in a sense, connected to specific earphone looking that you put within the ear canal, like an earphone, correct? Yes. Yep. And so what, what exactly is happening then as you're putting these things, I have earphones in right now, right? They're not the new Von ones, but uh, what is going on with this from this transmitter into these specific earphones? So the, um, and not sure if people won't be able to see this, but you and I will. So there's a generator that has a circuit board and battery, and this is what generates the electrical impulse. And then we plug a very simple set of headphones. They're in-ear headphones, so they're um, like little earbuds. Mm -hmm. And they do have a cord because they have an electrical um, conduit that comes up through the headphones. And that stimulation activates, it delivers a very mild electrical stim to this. If you put your finger in your ear where an earbud would go, then there's a little flap on the front of the ear called the tragus. And that is highly innervated by this branch of the vagus nerve. And then we also hit the backside of the ear canal. So it's a really mild electrical stimulation. Um, and we have an app that's basically the remote control for the unit. So that is sending a stimulation in there and that then stimulates the vagal nerve, correct, right there. And basically yes. sends the signal that is going in down the complete nerve, which is basically your whole back, right? It goes into the spinal and, and back up and forth from there. What What is that then doing that you're just sending a signal in? Because people say, oh, wouldn't that overactivate it? Wouldn't that be a right. bad thing almost that you're sending electrical shocks into the body? Right. Great question. So what it actually does is this branch of the nerve goes one way. So even though the vagus nerve in the that's in the main part of the body goes two ways, so it communicates from the, let's call it the gut, from the gut organs to the brain, and it also goes from the brain to the gut. This branch only goes to the brain. So you're not shooting, I'll say electricity, you are not shooting electricity straight into the brain. It's really activating this nerve. And the nerve, what that does is sends a message to the brain and says, okay, it's time to calm down. So what it does is releases these neurochemicals that help down-regulate 
the fight or flight. So we all have, uh, I'll kind of back up for a second and say that stress is important. So we, how many times have we heard you have to get rid of stress in your life? Well, not really, because stress makes you stronger, makes you stronger emotionally, physically, mentally. So you have to have some level of stress. The challenge is you also have to recover from those moments of stress. So physically, if all you did was lift weights all day long, your muscles would wear out. They would, there would be uh, injury, right? So we can't stress ourselves out chronically and not give ourselves the chance for our nervous system to recover, which then allows you to digest food, think clearly to make good decisions, breathe really deeply, um, slow your heart rate down so that your heart has a chance to function optimally. So when, when the vagus nerve is activated and the brain sends these neurochemicals, there's basically an internal AI that's going on, I'll say, right? So if everything is already really calm, then you're done. If you're really, really geared up and your heart rate is high, you're really your um, breathing is a little tight or constricted, and your gut is not digesting the food, um, a lot of people feel like this when they're anxious, then it will start releasing those relaxing neurochemicals to get all of those things balanced out, right? So it doesn't throw you into this deep state of relaxation. It gets you back to where you should be so that your body can do its job correctly. Yeah, and that's one of the most important things that we even see at our clinic is this idea of ANS regulation, right? Mm -hmm. Having a parasympathetic, sympathetic balance in a sense, because very often sympathetic, that fight or flight, is very yes. high. It's activated too much. And the funny thing is, as you mentioned there, one of the best ways to actually subdue that in a sense and activate parasympathetic and improve digestion is through vagal ne nerve stimulation. Mm -hmm. People often miss that, but it doesn't matter what you eat in a sense. If you're in a sympathetic state, you're not going to have the peristalsis of the colon. You're going to have poor digestion in general, poor absorption, and poor digestion and GI symptoms. Right. That and can lead into chronic GI conditions as well. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. add on top of that, please. Well, I, I like it that you brought that up because it doesn't mean it's one or the other, mm -hmm. right? This is... This is something that you and I will see in our industry or, or talking to different people. It's, okay, well, I did this, right? I started working out. I don't understand why my body isn't magically doing what it's supposed to do. Well, it's one element. And while it's important to do things in digestible bites so that we know there are routines that we can take on and be successful with, it probably means there are more things that we need to add together. And it does take a bit of trial and error. Um, nutrition is tremendously healing. Um, I heard on one of your earlier podcasts, you mentioned nutrition or, or nutrition as uh, medicine, right? So food is medicine. And I think we are going there as a society. We're getting uh, moving with education away from prepackaged and all of those things. So that's super important. There's still a piece where the physiology has to heal. Mm -hmm. And when we are super stressed out and, you know, we have technology, we have responsibilities, we have the economy. If you listen to the news, then there's that added stress and worrying about things that you have no control over. Yeah. And really what we're trying to do with devices like these is balance that out. But you also have to take control. You can't be putting, you know, your, your Nuvana Zen like buds in and putting on the news full blast and, and just worrying. Well, dude, that's not balancing. That's not right. what we're talking about. That's not like the, the, the people like go into the gym and then like smoke a cigarette and eat poorly afterwards. Right. Like that isn't balance, everybody. Let's be right. real. here. And you talk about that, like doing the work, that idea mm -hmm. of it. And, and I appreciate that because I think we get pitched too much of like magical cures here and silver bullets of just yeah. use my product and you'll get better. Like right. that is not how life works. No. 
So talk about what else is necessary and maybe even talk us through what a session would look like and maybe what to be doing, because how long is it? Should you be in a stress-free zone and not doing work and not watching the news? What do you want to see with people using this device? So it's the device itself is intended to be portable, literally fit into your routine. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a choice, I like to start with that. So when I look back at my life, when I was working in the hospital 12, 14 hours a day, literally. So hospital leadership, physicians, nurses, I mean, these are, these are people who are not, you don't have the luxury of taking a walk. You just go walk it off for 30 minutes. It's not going to happen. So uh, change your stress environment, not going to happen. So it's intended to be appropriate for those environments also. So I'll start there and say a 10 to 15 minute session, which you can literally put the device itself in your pocket and put one earbud in. So as long as if you're on a break or if you're, um, if you're at your desk or if you're in a hospital situation or, or a clinic environment and you're charting, then you can do this to help bring you down out of a stressful situation and kind of help balance that nervous system again and get you a little bit of that edge taken off. Um, you can, if, if you're using it for sleep, right? It's, we have some really good results that it helps improve deep sleep. It helps decrease restless sleep. So the amount of times you move during the night and decreases the amount of time it takes you to get to sleep. So doing it within an hour of bed, everyone should have some sort of bedtime routine, which includes turning off technology, turning off the TV. Okay, so not going to lecture about that, but <laughs> for this, within an hour of bed, do a 15-minute session. You can listen to music. We do have the headphones are functional um, audio. They're not, they're not bows. They're not beats, but you can listen to audio. Um, you can do guided meditation with them also if you want to choose your own. So whatever you would like to listen to, you can do that. Um, but it's really just 15 minutes. And how quickly can someone expect to see? Of course, everyone's unique and different. Yeah. We, we know that. But what, what on the average, the patterns of everything, when do people start to see improvements once they start to stimulate their vagal nerve? So if you track something, Right. So if you wear a wearable, um, you should see improvement in your sleep within a day or two, honestly, for the majority of people. Those with extreme sleep problems, it may take up to three weeks, kind of like any new routine. It takes a little while for it to take hold. Um, and then for heart rate variability, that, that seems to be the common Thing that people want to look at heart rate variability as the gold standard of vagal tone, it's not really that easy because heart rate variability has so many different factors that play in your hydration, your fitness level, are you sick, those kinds of things. So, um, but we do see a change in heart rate variability over time. Um, some people actually feel very calm right away. So we have a fair amount of people that will feel the results within this within the same session. Um, I encourage people to pay attention to their own body. And I think that's one of the things we may not do very well just as a as a culture. You know, up, oh, it's not this isn't working for me. But if you pay attention and maybe even journal, God forbid, <laughs> but do something to keep track of how you're feeling, even versus physiologically what um, what wearable is monitoring signs for you. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see people really do that, give themselves that score while they're doing it, while they're in a kind of calm state and just, say, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday I was at this, today I'm at this. I always tell people, don't rely on external devices only to tell you how you are. If right. We did that run by the labs all the time. Half the doctors running labs say you're fine when you know you're not. And you start to think you're crazy then because you feel something. Oh, we don't see anything. Nothing's wrong with you. You know, that right. there is a difference between the two. And you are your best advocate and best understanding.
who right. you are and how you feel. So that's a big one. But if we backtrack a little bit to this idea of heart rate variability, everyone knows the aura ring, these kind of other ones. But I actually heard about this and where I was, it was HeartQuest, HRV, an advanced yes. system for practitioners. Mm -hmm. Have you seen or, or have you gotten any results from Dr. Kessler's and others on what Nuvana was doing with that? Because it goes beyond aura ring way further. It's advanced system. It's right. looking, I think, now vagal kind of toning what's going on. You know, even the chakras, all these things it's looking at. Right. Do you have any kind of input from that? What what it's showing there as people use the Zen? Yes. So, and, and it's a brilliant system. Heart Heart Quest. I think Dr. Kessler yeah, has done a yeah. tremendous job with that. The great thing about that system is it specifically identifies physiology that could benefit from bagel stimulation. Right. So there's a certain balance of sympathetic versus parasympathetic. And when those people were identified, like this person would benefit versus this person over here may not need it, the, the results are dramatically different. Right. So the person who has been identified in the clinic setting or in our situation is more in testing. Um, for needing vagal stimulation, you could see the results right away. So do a session, we would um, do the heart quest and then a vagus nerve session. And then immediately afterwards, you could see the difference. Yeah. Whereas that's the beauty of it, right? You could see yeah. that right away and you could take those parameters right away while you're doing the session. It's not a lab result with a snapshot that you wait weeks for. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then those who are already pretty balanced aren't really going to notice a lot of difference, right? In their, you know, in the way that they can articulate how they feel and physiologically, they're not going to see a huge difference if they're already pretty balanced. And that just makes sense. It's like that with so many things. And you're still use you still could use it in a preventive measure because there's no side there's no negative. I think that's right. the big thing a lot of people miss about this. It's like, well, why should I? It's almost why shouldn't you is a better question because you right. will become out of balance at some points. And why not be preemptive in giving your body something that could quickly then rebalance it? You're gonna have bad days. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. And why not be preparing your body in a sense? Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. And vagal tone is documented to decline over age, right? So once you hit your 50s, then it starts declining. So your stress resilience absolutely changes. And we all have older family members or loved ones or friends, and you wonder why are they so nervous? Why are they so skittish? But that's because their nervous systems don't function like they used to. Yeah. Who shouldn't use this then? I mean, we, we kind of went like with everyone to kind of benefit, but are there people that <laughs> really shouldn't use this device? Yeah, we so in our safety guide, we recommend anyone who has an implanted electrical stimulator of some sort, whether it's a pacemaker, the fibrillator. Um, I know that some folks have spine stimulators just out of an abundance of caution not to cross electrical signals. We say no one with those things. And the fact that we target the ear, people with TMJ, so with a tight jaw or some sort of a, a jaw issue, it may entrain some of the muscles here in the jaw if you turn the intensity up. So we don't want to aggravate anyone's condition with TMJ, but that's that's really primarily it. Right. And let's let's talk a little bit about mental health, because I feel like a lot mm -hmm. of these are the physical symptoms of of life and and the ones we really focus on. But, you know, I, I just posted the other day about children, you know, the mental health crisis going on. There was a study showing that, you know, parenting styles are very impactful of mental health. I saw that. Right. And and how, you know, the question then is how do we improve, not just lay it all on the parents, be better. I think, you know, you got to counter certain things such as technology, iPads that are pervasive, again, in these child's life that are 
then changing their brains a bit and changing how they deal with certain stresses in life. Is, is this something that you see can be applied within children to help with mental health as they grow and develop? I really hope so. Yeah. So right now, um, we do have in our safety card, we say not for children. Now, the reason for that is really because we personally haven't tested our product on children. We are very careful about any claims we make or anything like that. So we just want to make sure that we are in, um, that we're the safest option for everyone. And that uh, what I will say is that there are medical devices that stimulate the vagus nerve that are approved for children. So um, University of Notre Dame actually has been approved with an NIH grant to study adolescent suicide risk. And they're going to incorporate our vagus nerve stimulator into their program. So that's it's a long study. And you know how those studies really last quite a while, but we're really pleased um, that Notre Dame's Suicide Prevention Center has adopted our technology to start studying in that population. That's really great news because it seems like up to this point, the only type of solution that was going on around there is drug kids. And, yeah. you know, I think that's probably the worst solution of them. All. Yeah. Uh, for some may be necessary. I'm not. But for others, that's that's almost a kiss of death in, in some ways. Um, so we need to find how to do this in a more subtle way because children Agreed. really are, I think, influenced by the subtle energies of life. You know, what we've noticed also, it's like things like homeopathy have a big change on children um, and they're not yet so jaded as to what's out there. and they're not, they don't have a skeptical mind, right? Right. They not yet. Of a wonderfully curious and an imaginative mind that allows just any information to be absorbed within and hopefully correct something going on. So I really do hope that Notre Dame study gets that uh, tracked and, and we could start to yeah. apply these things as, as we see this crisis unfold. Um, as far as the, the products themselves, you have three sets right now. Can you go into that and what the differences are and, and any new products that you have beyond the Zen that are in line? So the, we have the main product, which is, the, which is called Zen. Mm -hmm. And the two products outside of that are really bundles. They're, um, we include different accessories just to make everything easier to purchase all at once. But the key product is the same. The hardware is the same. So I like to say that the app is almost the second product. Now, our app is free, so we don't have a subscription model. Um, that may be something in the future that, let's say, um, let's say there is some sort of a treatment option that we seek uh, under FDA guidance or FDA clearance then that might be something that would be separate, but you would already have the tool. It's almost like having a pill. I hate to make the that correlation, but it's very familiar to all of us, right? But the inside, what's the, the ingredients of the pill change. So these electrical stimulation patterns are being studied widely by so many groups around the country, around the world. So we wanted to stay flexible. If you have hardware and you program it with exactly one electrical stimulation program, then if someone wants a new one because Stanford just discovered it, then they would have to send the product back, we reprogram it, and then they get it back. Or worse, they would have to buy a new one. So we don't, we didn't want to have to do that, which is why we have uh, the app. So I think the app is what's going to change over time. Uh, one, becoming a little easier to use for customers, but also having the ability to either load information for a care provider, um, track sessions. We don't track information. We don't do any of that right now. So all the scary things that people worry about, about apps, we don't do that. Um, but in the future, I can see that we'll have, we'll be able to incorporate a sensor and the delivery of the stimulation to give better information maybe to a clinical provider or a coach or something like that to help people on their journey. 
that's the cool thing a lot of, about a lot of the technology coming out. It's dynamic and it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you have to constantly upgrade. I mean, it's the one funny thing about like iPhones. It's such an advanced technology, but you have to get a new one every damn year. And I think part of that <laughs> is because it's a lot of money, right? Everyone dishes mm -hmm. out a thousand every year, basically, yeah. for like one megapixel better camera and like right. a few updates that you Gotta barely even camera. notice the difference. <laughs> Or they just slow down the old models, right, to where they don't move. Uh, it feels like work. that. It does feel like oh, that. Oh, no, they've been sued for doing that. They're <laughs> literally doing that. In Europe, they showed if a model's like two or they actually purposefully kind of make them go slower. So it's 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 an actual tactic. Um, oh, but, well, but good the news. Good, yeah, <laughs> the good things. This sounds like a, a lot. Some of the technology we also use at the clinic, like biocharger and other that have recipes that you know are connected. Mm -hmm. And as they get information, the frequencies change of what can do what they yes. apply that. So you're doing the same thing here, which is wonderful. Has there been any pushback from anyone so far? I mean, you mentioned the FDA earlier. They're usually not fond of anything that isn't in the big pharma realm. But, right. I mean, have they like sent you a warning letter yet? I mean, that's no. how you know you made it, by the way. <laughs> right. So so maybe not yet. Like once you get that warning letter, it's like, oh, okay, great. Right. Not yeah. yet. We, okay. I mean, we, so the FDA has a guiding document, excuse me, for, um, for wellness, for mm -hmm. wellness products. So we right. adhere to that document very carefully um we we have plenty of counsel and uh, we always want to do the right thing right yeah, yeah now the right thing versus fighting with a regulatory body or it may those may be two different things right maybe the regulatory body wants things a certain way and we know it can be different then we will always advocate for what's right but I do think in time, because there are so many medical applications, um, that this type of technology, maybe even ours, will be used in specific disease treatment. Right. And so, of course, when you leave it to the wellness, that that alleviates you of that treat cure, you know, disclaimer that you must use for the FDA to be appeased. Are doctors, though, utilizing this with their patients, not saying for specific diseases, but mm -hmm. for improvement of their patients? Yeah. And um, we actually, we have some really great stories coming out of everything from integrative cardiology. So MDs who operate in that integrative medicine field, also functional neurology, functional medicine, um, mold treatment. These are things that I don't have experience with, right? So as an ICU nurse, I'm like, where is it? mold illness? You have to be really, really sick and we give a lot of pharma that's just all i knew how to treat so I, my eyes have been opened tremendously by the creativity of practitioners out here that are trying to isolate these um these illnesses that are really wrecking people's quality of life and i think i've heard you speak with dr callahan mm -hmm. and her story it just really resonates so we're we're hearing a lot of really great stories when practitioners incorporate vagus nerve stimulation into their protocols and yeah. they regimen whatever it is for the patients um you and I have talked about it's you need a certain amount of exercise nutrition maybe there's spiritual healing for some folks that that plays into it um mental health there are all kinds of components but yeah yeah. I, I feel like any integrative or functional doctor has to be aware of the vagus nerve, of course, and understanding that it's so key mm -hmm. in this autonomic nervous system response, this balancing of everything. So if you're overlooking it, you're you're missing a big piece. You know, you could go after the pathogen, you could go after the symptom and everything, but there's always an underlying dysfunction. And often it's a system of the body, and sometimes that's nervous system. And, and the yeah. vagal nerve is so important uh, to to the functioning of that system. So I do feel that many, you know, should be looking at devices like this. Um, what what's your kind of next steps on the company? What are you looking at? You know, what's what's new and and what's in development? Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, we're working right now on the app. We have a lot of feedback from our customers. That's one thing that's how I like to run the company is we pay attention to the customers, find out where are the pain points, what's frustrating, what what do they love, 
and let's take away the the irritating parts, which our app is not fancy. So we're moving towards getting to where it's a pleasant experience uh, in the app and a little more intuitive. So working on the app and uh, if I let you talk to my chief technology officer, he would say he wants, he's really got new headphones on the horizon um, that are really cool. So those maybe by the end of this year. Are you guys partnering with Beats by Dre? That, I, you that know cool? what? <laughs> Give them a call for me, will you? <laughs> if Dre's listening right now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get that get that vagal nerve uh, yeah, model out there. <laughs> That's right. Uh, last question here before we kind of uh, wrap this up. If there were other things that someone wanted to apply to improve their vagal nerve, they're listening to this and saying, all right, I get it. Like vagal nerve and stimulation is really important. I could absolutely use, use this technology and maybe plan to. But what else can I do to help with the vagal nerve? What would be your advice? Oh, there's so much. And so you don't have to have a physical product or electrical stem. And honestly, every person, it may not work for every single person. And we know that. Right. So meditation is mm -hmm. one of the best ways to access and activate your vagus nerve. You do need to get into deep meditation, uh, which you can pair that with breath work or separate from breath work. Um, but those things, those are my two that I recommend the most often. Things, you know, when people talk about gargling, I've heard that you have to gargle hard enough to almost gag. So that sounds really unpleasant to me. <laughs> I don't and, really want to do it. Let me just go like ask you about that a little bit because I actually know that there's a quantum information technology our, our clinic was exposed to. Where basically, you would you would take uh, some water, you gargle it, and we would stimulate with a laser the the vagal nerve in the back while doing it. But what is that? Why the gargling? Because I actually don't even know. I'd have to ask one of the practitioners here what that is. Yeah. But why the gargling? I, I think I honestly because it's so off putting to me. I haven't delved into it far enough, but I'm thinking it's close to the fact that if you're vibrating this area in the neck enough, um, that the gargling is helping with that, which is why they also say that humming, mm. uh, humming or the ohm that you do during meditation or yoga, um, that those also activate the vagus nerve. Um, so I yeah, I think it's just that vibration in the neck area, which is where the two main trunks of the yeah. vagus come down. Yeah, really interesting. I had no clue why I knew there was like stimulation in the back, but it was literally asking someone to take a sip, gargle it while doing that stimulation, maybe both ends. I have no clue. But right. You just brought it up. I was like, yes, I do remember that. <laughs> yes, I recall that. Anything else? Gargling, meditation, breath work? Yeah, I, so exercise as you are able. Right. So whatever your ability, do something. And exercise is what maintains a healthy system, nervous system, respiratory system, cardiovascular. You know, we can list them all off. Um, if you're not able to use your legs, use your arms, use your trunk, use whatever you have available to you, but get movement in and just overall do something. Right. right? The, the reason we decline in our health as humans is because we don't, I don't think we've appreciated what really it takes to live a longer, healthier life. I'm all about living a healthier life. I don't want to live a longer life if it's uh, not to my standards of what I think would be enjoyable, right? And that's different for everyone. So I don't want to say what mine is. Um, Someone else's might be completely different. If they're not able to climb a mountain when they're 90, that may just be terrible. Whereas I might be comfortable doing something very quiet. But exercise really does help with the vagus nerve. And I've heard you talk about that as well, that it's one of the key things that we have to do. Just keep moving. Movement, right. We we don't no. do enough. I mean, we're sitting here right now talking. Right. About this, but Hopefully after this, we both get up and move a yes. little bit, maybe go outside in nature, right? That's a big one too. Move Absolutely. in nature together. 
Those are wonderful things because I think that yeah. stimuli, right? I think we sit in this digital world yep. and I can't make the, the, you know, scientific claim that, you know, sitting and, and watching something digitally will impact your vagus nerve negatively, but I have to assume it probably would. Whereas being in a natural setting, being in nature, which we are part of and mm -hmm. moving within it and stimulating the eyes in different ways and, and, you know, so many different senses coming at and being passed along through this network it has right. to be beneficial for it. And I like it that you said in nature together, mm -hmm. because I think both are applicable, right? You can be mindful and go out into nature and, and just enjoy it, but really, really spend time, allow yourself to sort of get lost, even if you're just looking at one thing. But our lack of connection, we are social beings and the vagus nerve is actually the tone of the vagus nerve is 100% impacted by our social nature. And if you look over the last several years where we've all become more isolated or we're 2D instead of 3D and we can't touch each other, um, it just, it, it changes the way we operate. And whatever goes on above the neck affects everything below the neck and vice versa. So if you start getting sad and borderline depressed um, and you only are interacting with yourself and your world is shrinking, then it starts affecting your organs. It starts affecting how you digest food, how you metabolize fat, how you breathe, how uh, resilient your cardiac functionality is. It just affects everything. It really does. And it, it's interesting. Uh, something just came into my head as you were speaking there, the image of Avatar, James Cameron's movie, where they mm -hmm. would plug in literally where I think the vagal nerve would be to the natural, yes. to the animal and have mm -hmm. that connection. And it's kind of like, I really wonder, I, I would love to ask James Cameron if that is vagal nerve he was thinking of there. We'll get him on the call and we'll get him, we'll get him on your podcast and um, you can call Dr. Dre. I was going to say, we get <laughs> him and Dre together, answer right. his question, makes the new beats for Ivana. Uh, it'll be a great one. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Amy, uh, where can people learn more about Nuvana, the, the Zen uh, box set, the bundles, everything? Uh, our website is nuvanalife.com. So it's N E U V A N A life.com. Um, that's our social handle for everything for LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, try to make it easy, but you can learn more about the science. You can um, buy products there. Great. Amy, thank you so much for coming on and all your work with Nuvana. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. It really has, and yeah. not at all stressful. And while stress is inevitable, it doesn't have to become chronic. With tools like Zen through Nirvana, we can manipulate our vagus nerve to release neurotransmitter that help us remain calm, focused, and in a parasympathetic state, which is the rest and digest state we want to be in. Be sure yeah. to go check out nuvanalife.com and use code YOURHEALTH, that's your health, Y-O-U-R, health, to receive 10% off any Zen box set or Zen bundle. Until next time, continue writing your own healing story.